Welcome to the party, you guys. This is what we call a very special Gracie breakdown. What makes it so special? Well, we're here at a uh, Gracie garage visit, Palm Beach, Florida, for a very special friend of ours, uh, Mr. Lee, who's actually celebrating his birthday today. Happy birthday, bro. And um, it's special because both of us are here it does make at a it single special. Gracie garage visit for a single Gracie University student. It's pretty major. Um, and we were chilling early in the morning, as you can see, based on the beautiful sunrise. And I had to wake Hedon up because the Gracie breakdown had to go down. And uh, many people know us for mostly breaking down the UFC fights, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's not that we don't break other fights down. We have in the past. Yes. But this one had to be broken down for many reasons. Strike force, the final card before it gets fully acquired and um, kind of engulfed into the UFC. What are we breaking down? We're breaking down some jujitsu. There were some nice submissions That's over there. That's for sure. I'm just gonna have to give, because we won't be able to break down all of them. So Josh Barnett defeated Nandor Gelmino with a beautiful arm triangle from the mount. Um, Gayhart Musasi, Mike Kyle, uh, submission via rear naked choke, beautiful. Looked almost like an in-action fight. That's how in it looked, action, right? action basic Just combatives, basic rear naked choke. Very direct. Um, Ronaldo Jacare Souza defeated Ed Herman with the, uh, with the Kimura, beautiful Kimura we're gonna discuss. Haja Gracie defeated on the undercard Anthony Smith with an arm triangle from the mount, also very noteworthy and going to discuss that, of course, of course, of course. And Tim Kennedy defeated uh, Trevor Smith with a submission via guillotine choke, a really nice, really deep guillotine as well on the undercard. We're going to, uh, of course, give honorable mention and a quick little demonstration of the UFC 155, um, Joe Lozon's flying scissor heel hook of Jim Miller. We had to. Too many requests. Too many requests. And then we're going to talk about the Gracie giveaway winner for last time, and we're going to do the Gracie giveaway for this time, which obviously has to be what? The new Series 2 Gracie Gi. But we'll talk about that in a second. First, we have to talk about this um, Ronaldo Jacare Souza Kimura submission after achieving side control on Ed Herman. Um, what was really nice, I thought, is after he passed the guard, yeah, he was on the other side, rotate here. After uh, Jacare passed the guard, I forgot if it was an underhook pass, but he gets around and Ed Herman faces him, but Jacques Adet controls the head very well and then uses the split control here on the leg where you underhook one leg. And the idea here on the split control is that this person wants to bring this knee in the guard and then they want to straighten their head away. Boom, that was their goal, go back. But if this elbow is trapping the head on this side right here, boom, and this hand is hugging the inner thigh, if he don't knee slips in my stomach, as Ed Herman's did with Jacques Adet, by just holding this leg right here and keeping the head trapped, he cannot straighten his body away from me at the angle necessary to recompose the guard. So even if the knee gets him pushing away a little more, just by holding the leg right here, you can take this and you can throw it away. So we did a very good job of using the split control and outside head control to prevent the guard, which was very beautiful for those who didn't notice. Then he saw this hand just chilling down low right here. So he grabbed the wrist and he started creeping under and he got it. And then he went to his knees, he picked up his shoulder and started ripping it right here, but Ed Herman was very flexible and wasn't tapping. So then, Jacques came down, stepped over the head, and finally got the head trapped. And once the head trapped right here, basically, I don't know if it broke or dislocated or what, but it went deep. It went all the way, like almost touching his head. I think it might have touched his head. Yeah, so either he's very flexible or very broken. Either way, he tapped, and uh, that was a done deal. Beautiful so, how he trapped the head. So go back to the side mount, so where should sure. my hand be? Should it be here? Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, generally, you just don't want the hand to be in the pocket between my two arms. It's too catchable for all it's, these options here. And the reason why that happened is because it's tough. You hug my thigh, and now I'm here trying to fight my yes. arms. Yeah, it, yeah, it chilled. It was there, but it chilled for a second on your stomach. Put it down for a sec. It came down, which made it very grabbable. Yeah. And that's when it started shooting inside. But generally, like he don't said you want it underhooked or in front of this arm over here. Boom, protected. You know, but. Um, not so easy when you're trying to escape and trying to be active. It's hard to just have your hands in a defensive posture. Yeah, it might be somewhere escape. safe, and then you try to escape, but you can't escape, so then you think, you know what, let's try to put it somewhere else. And then that somewhere else happened to be where he needed it. Ultimately, impatience is, uh, is, is, is what gets you caught, you know? If you're patient and say, I just don't want to get submitted from here, you're going to be okay. Correct. Very nice, very nice Kimura, very deep, very effective submission. And then we have uh, Hajar in his fight against Anthony Smith. And uh, where Hajar ends up in the guard, standing over, kind of in this situation, hitting him a little bit, puts some nice hip pressure, gets the legs trapped enough where he does the open hip, which our grandfather loved this pass. Yeah. Standing over, he puts, he said, because you can't reach the foot right here, but you open the hips, look, grab the heel, push it out of the way. And then Hajar ends up beautifully in the same situation where he came down, trapped the head, 
And then he had this leg here. Was it split? No, he stepped it, through. Initially, he had this leg. Yeah. And then this um, Anthony's leg was very high. And then Hodge did something very cool right here. He stepped over, boom. And he trapped in a, kind of a leg drag type situation here where he wanted to trap Anthony's leg across his lap. And, uh, and the beauty of this is from here, you can not only trap the person's leg, but then you can slowly work right into the mount position. Um, it didn't stick as tight as he wanted it to. It kind of slipped back off to the side mount, but uh, it was a nice little attempt. If you watch it back, you'll see um, Hodger's leg come through here really nicely, almost trapped this leg perfectly. So he lands here in the side control, and then eventually he just slides right back over to the mount. And what we really like, and Josh Barnett caught a similar arm triangle in his fight. What we really liked about um, Hodger, he had the over-under, he was trying to creep it up, but uh, Anthony was too well defending this right here, like hand in front of my neck. He was like this, just too well defending the arm clearance across. So Hodger had his over-under, and then he, yeah, he did it beautifully. He let go, threw a beautiful elbow here, boom! And then came back down. So now, exactly, that's when that hand started getting real concerned about the situation. So by throwing the elbow, it's so amazing, right? Jiu-Jitsu, isn't it beautiful? Explain what I'm talking about right now. The question is, do you think he threw the elbow because he wanted to knock his opponent out? Right? No. Of course not. That's what it is. So Jiu-Jitsu has lots of striking, but the strike's purpose is different than what most people think. Yes. It's just to create a little reaction, and then now next time... It was very, it was very unemotional. This elbow was very unemotional. Correct. It was very much click. Hey, put your arm up for me real quick. Please, it, please. Yes, but it looks so powerful and so crisp that you thought that was a victory attempt, but it wasn't. That was just a clip just to get the hands up. Hodger's too smart to get emotional with strikes from the mount. So from down here, he comes up, he hit, boom, boom, perfectly. The hand came up, and then look what he did. He used his chest and his shoulder to shuck it across, and then he got trapped mm -hmm. in here beautifully. And then he brought, there are a couple ways to step off from the side control from the Trom triangle. You can step off with a knee lead or a foot lead. He used the foot lead. Knee lead would have been a tripod, and the knee comes through. The foot lead, you lean forward, get your butt out of the way, and you whip your foot over the hip. And then you step off to the side, as he did, perfectly right here. So then he ended up like this. What did Anthony do? He tried to defend, he tried to hug around his thigh with hopes of creating some space right here to free the neck, but it just didn't work. Well, yeah, because uh, mm -hmm. Hodger was, hold, let go. Mm -hmm. Hodger was fully locked. Now bring your leg up to your arm. And he was already here. In other yeah. words, once it's locked, and you're gonna try to create space after the lock is one thing, but to create space, grab your leg, and, and, and create that gap and preserve it is another. So it's almost yeah. like whoever gets there first. Of course, like in many things in fighting. <laughs> yeah, very much. So Hodger had the full, and of course, he's experienced that defense, the leg hug and stretch defense many times. So Hodger knew what was coming. But he had so much pressure with the upper body and his base and his toes and the drive and the squeeze, that, um, that it worked beautifully. And he yeah. didn't use this variation, but he could have. And for those of you who are watching and want to understand the arm triangle a little better, let me have the neck a little piece. When you get out here, in terms of the squeeze, it's not the shoulder driving in the person's jaw that does it. It's low, it's as deep as possible. And the way I like to describe it here, you can walk off to the side a little bit, is it's like a snake squeezing its prey, where it, it gets tighter from every inch and every angle. So just from here, just by hugging the person tight, just by overall constriction, they go. And if someone has a real skinny neck, and you have really long arms like I do, what you do is you let go, shoot this, kick this hip through, and then you use the whole unit here and pull the person to your stomach. And that incorporates your back muscles more than just your bicep, shoulder, and, uh, and chest. So, it's a different way to squeeze. It only works effectively though if you can grab your bicep, kind of like Josh Barnett did, but Josh's was different because he finished it from the mount. Correct, yeah. And it's cool because if your opponent's a little extra tired, then that kind of come plays an effect and they tap a little bit faster. The more they're breathing on the Big bottom time. and they're, they're fighting for their life to stay off their back and then the choke lands, they go even faster. Yeah, arm triangle is one of those ones where when they're exhausted and they have a reason to tap, they'll tap. But like I've caught him in the arm triangle before and squeeze for the death and it doesn't work. Meaning he gets a little gap, a little fall, or, and I'm trying, or before I fully understood even the bicep lockdown variation. Um, but the moral of the story is one of those moves that, you can know, be very quick. can be very quick, it can be or very can difficult to finish. Yeah, it's, it's one of the fine line techniques for sure. Um, flying heel hook? Yeah, flying scissor heel hook. Jim, Joe, amazing fight. Of course, Jim took it via unanimous decision. But um, the amount of tweets and posts we got after that fight, 
hey, where's the flying scissor heel hook? We almost lost our jobs as the official Gracie breakdowners. <laughs> they were almost gonna go searching for two other Gracies to do the breakdowns on a regular basis because it took us so long, and we apologize for that, you guys. Things get busy around the Gracie Academy, and um, you know, no better time than here to show you guys what we should have shown you a long time ago. So it was a um, open stance where um, uh, Joe had a regular stance and Jim had his southpaw stance right here. And that situation lends itself perfectly to the flying scissor heel hook. And when was the last time we saw this? It was Anderson Silva, December 31st, 2004. Which I think is the last time he got submitted in competition, in MMA. So and, Anderson uh, Silva, has gotten submitted. Yes, and you Isn't know what's crazy? Cool. About both flying scissor heel hooks, this is just for the books. They both happen in the third round with a minute or two left. It makes sense. With a minute left, you do whatever it takes. And, you know, I'm not gonna say I told you so, but while I was watching the Jim and Joe fight, I was thinking to myself, man, Joe, you should just go for it, bro. Just flying scissor heel hook, I thought. Because I remember, of course, the epic submission of Anderson Silva. And I thought, Joe, just do it, bro. Just go for it. 30 seconds before he went, you thought that? I'm telling you, bro. I wish I would have wrote it down and told someone. But I'm not going to play, you know, whatever. So the bottom line is, it crossed my mind. And when he went for it, I was like, are you serious? And no one has done that in the UFC in a long time from the front like this. But again, the stances were perfect. So what happens? Joe throws the jab to distract it. As Jim respects it, he starts to throw the legs in as his back hand goes down. And the move basically is here, look. This leg came across the lap, the bottom knee comes in. The objective for this move is to off balance me this way and then leave this foot here for an inverted heel hook where you can catch the heel right there is fine, lock it up and pull. That's what you want to do. But with, with uh, Jim, he didn't fall down, he landed here. So Joe had to go belly up, belly down, hook the heel from underneath and try to catch it from here. But of course, slippery. And they weren't slippery from sweat, they were slippery from Joe's blood. That was one of the most epic, bloody battles in UFC history, for sure, top five. And um, the foot slipped out, they kind of spun crazily out of the whole situation, and then the fight continued from there. Heel hooks in general are slippery. Yeah. Plus, with that blood, it's some extra slippery. No question about it, and I think that, you know, even though he lost the fight, I think it was like fight of the move of the fight, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Oh, it's cool for his reel. It's major, so congratulations, bros. Epic battle, we appreciate it. Appreciate the flying scissor heel hook. Strike Force, congratulations for the good run. Should it lead to a lot of amazing matchups now that most of these fighters will be transitioning into the UFC? Yes. And um, we can't wait to see it, you guys. Um, congratulations. In terms of the last Gracie breakdown, we gave away some, some gear. We said, go to Gracie University, go to GracieLifestyle.com, the website. Tell us whatever shirt and whatever hoodie you want, and you enter to win. That's easy. And the winner was Twice. all, all Jitsu 12. And he chose the Keep It Playful Jiu Jitsu shirt. Okay, this one here says Keep It Playful, which is the very good philosophy to have in Jiu Jitsu. And he chose the Choke Hoodie, Submission Series Choke Hoodie. The blue. Get, is he getting both? He's getting both, the zip up. Congratulations, All Jitsu, bro. You kept it real on the highest level. All Jitsu. We can't ignore that name, right? Yeah, it's a good name. All Jitsu 12. So the next giveaway Series 2 Pearl Weave. I'm wearing it right now. Contrast stitching, double reinforced loops, mouth guard pocket for the inside swiper right here. And um, nice, simple patches, beautiful embroidery. It's basically, see here's, the thing. yes, since 1925. Tell them what it says on my shoulders up there. It says the gentle art. It Why took is me like, good to put it on your back? The gentle art. So whenever someone's on your back, they're compassionate and they, they're reminded of how gentle they can and should be. <laughs> see, this is a strategic placement here, my friends. Um, it's to help you is what it's designed for. Yes, 100%. I see every time I'm about to choke you. <laughs> That's why I put it there. <laughs> Listen, so you're gonna win a series two Pearl Weave Gracie gear, and the bottom line is, does the gi really matter? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but does it look nice? Yes. Yes. And if you look nice, you feel nice. Correct, because why? And if you feel nice, you perform nice, you roll nicely. <laughs> okay? So I love my new series two Pearl Weave. The series Whoa. two Pearl Weave, you guys, it's yours. Answer the question of the video, the question of the day. If you don't tell them what it is. With all these amazing Strike Force fighters, and they're all joining the UFC now, there must be a fight that you can, you know, you wish to see between a Strike Force yes. fighter and a UFC fighter. Tell us your dream matchup, not two or three of them. The number one yes. fight you're looking forward to between Strike Force fighters and now UFC fighters merging. Yeah, this is, it's very exciting because the UFC fighters, it's kind of like the same bucket of fighters. Very much. 
And now all of a sudden we got a handful of new guys. So Newcomers. Gonna thing up. I'm, yeah. I'm going I'm to get excited for the next UFC. Boom. Strike Tell us your fight. number one pick, most exciting bout, and you're automatically entered to win the Gracie Series 2 Pearl Weave Gracie Gi, now available at GracieLifestyle.com. You guys, thanks for keeping it real. Thanks for keeping it playful. We can't wait to see you guys next time. Gracie University, Gracie Garage. It's the way to do it. Do they keep it playful? They're working on it. Okay, keepitplayful.com. Our grandfather's vision was to share the gift of Gracie Jiu Jitsu with people all over the world. Thanks to global internet accessibility and the development of a revolutionary interactive online learning system, his dream came true and his legacy will live on forever. Gracie University, let us teach you everything he taught us. with people all over the world. Thanks to global internet accessibility and the development of a revolutionary interactive online learning system, his dream came true and his legacy will live on forever. Gracie University, let us teach you everything he taught us.